Hello and welcome back to the Simon Says Minigame tutorial for Empire Part 5 and let's just jump straight back into it, shall we? So in this video, we are going to continue and make sure that the actions that we have for the image buttons instead of the Simon Says screen are going to be calling a function that is going to check if the button that the user just pressed is the correct one in the current pattern. But now the lit versions of each of these image buttons, such as this first one right here, are not going to have actions because they're only used to light the button up whenever we want to show the user the pattern that they need to follow and after the user has pressed on the button. So for that, we're just going to go ahead and remove all of the actions from the image buttons with the lit version of the image. So we're just going to remove that. And then we'll go down here to the blue one as well. And the green one right here. And then the yellow right here. Like so. Now for the unlit versions of the image buttons, we are going to switch the null actions for two different actions. The first one is going to set the corresponding button lit variable to true so that the button will be lit instead of unlit. And the second action is going to call the function that is going to check if the user pressed on the correct button. So for that, we're going to start with the unlit version of the red button. So we're going to remove the null action. And then we're going to make a list of actions since we're going to do two actions. So we're going to add two square brackets. And then we're going to say set variable. And we're going to set the red button lit variable to true. So we're going to say red button lit and then comma after the string and then say true like so. And then the second action is going to be the function call. So we're going to say function and then we're going to call this function check user input. And this function is going to take one parameter. So we're going to add a comma and this parameter we're going to call button like so and this is going to be equal to the value red like so so this means that we're going to call a function called check user input and this function is going to take one parameter that is going to tell the function which button that the user clicked on and now we're just going to continue and do the same thing for the other unlit versions of the image buttons as well so for that we can go ahead and copy paste this list of actions into the blue unlit version so we're going to remove the null action for the unlit blue image button and then paste the list of actions like so. And then we'll set the blue button lit variable to true instead of the red one. And then we're going to change the value for the button variable for the check user input function to say blue instead. And then we'll do the next one, which is the green button. So we're going to remove this null action and paste the list here as well. And then rename the red button lit to say green button lit. And then change this red to say green. And then the last one, which is the yellow one. So we're going to remove the null action and paste the list. And rename the variable to yellow. And the button parameters value to yellow. Like so. Now the last thing we're going to do with these buttons is to make sure that the user cannot click on them as long as the input ready variable is set to false. And for that, we can use the sensitive property, which is available for buttons. And we're going to set it to true or false, depending on if the input ready variable is true or false. So for that, we're going to go back up into the first unlit button, which is the red button right here. And after the action list, we're going to say sensitive. And then we're going to refer to the input ready variable, which has the value true or false. So we're going to say input ready, like so. So now if the input ready variable is true, then it's going to say sensitive true. Otherwise it's going to say sensitive false. And then we'll go ahead and do the other image buttons as well. So we're going to copy paste this sensitive property into the next image button with the actions list. So we're going to paste it there and then down here and there like so. So now that we've done that, we're going to continue and create this check user input function. So we're going to scroll back up to the init Python block right here. And underneath the last function, which is this off buttons function, we're going to create a few of the lines. 
and then go inwards once in the indentations. And then we're going to say def check user input. And since this function takes one parameter called button, we're going to say button instead of the two round brackets. And instead of here, we're going to make some of the variables that we have created early on into globals so that we can change the values. And the first one is going to be the current button index variable. So we're going to say global current button index. And then we also have the input ready variable. So we're going to say global input ready. And then we're also going to need the correct picks variable. So we're going to say global correct picks, like so. Now we're also going to need two new variables to use inside of this function. And for that, we're going to scroll back down into the start label. And we're going to create these variables underneath this last variable right here. And the first one, we're going to call user picks. And this one is simply going to keep a track of how many buttons that the user has picked so far. And this one, we're going to set to zero as the initial value. And the second variable is going to help us to pick the correct button from the current button pattern list to then compare that button to the button that the user has picked to see if they are equal. And this one we're going to call selected button index. And this one is going to be equal to zero as the initial value. So now that we've done that, we're going to go back up into the check user input function right here. And then we're going to make these variables into globals as well. So we're going to say global user picks and global selected button index. Now the purpose of this function is to of course check if the button that the user has pressed is the correct one according to the current button pattern list. And to do that, we're going to need to create an if statement that is going to compare if the index value of the color of button that the user has picked instead of the buttons list is the same as the correct button instead of the current button pattern list. And if they are the same, then that means that the user has picked the correct button. So for that, we're going to create a few empty lines. And then we're going to say if buttons dot index. And then instead of these two round brackets, we're going to say button. And then is equal to current button pattern. And then instead of two square brackets, we're going to say selected button index, like so. So here we are first of all getting the correct index value of the color of button that the user has picked from the buttons list by using the index method. So we are supplying the color of the button that the user has picked to the index method of the buttons list. And this is going to give us the index value of that button inside of the list. And then we are comparing that index value to the correct button instead of the current button pattern list. And if that is true, then that means that the user has picked the correct button. So instead of this if statement, we are first of all going to increase the correct picks variable by one because now the user has picked the correct value. So we're going to say correct picks plus equals one. And then we're also going to increase the user picks variable. So we're going to say user picks plus equals to one. And now we're going to create another if statement that is going to go inside of this if statement that is going to check if the selected button index variable is equal to user picks. And if that is true, then that means that the user has picked all of the correct buttons that has been revealed so far. And in such a case, we want to reset some of the variables so that the minigame can start showing the buttons again to the user together with the next new button. So for that, we're going to say if selected button index is equal to user picks. And then we're going to reset some of the variables. So the first one is going to be selected button index. So we're going to say selected button index is equal to zero. And then also the current button index variable. So we're going to say current button index is equal to zero and then we're going to reset the user picks as well so we're going to say user picks is equal to zero and input ready should now be equal to false like so 
But now if the user has not picked all of the correct buttons so far, so let's say that the pattern has shown four buttons to the user and the user has only picked two buttons so far, then we are instead going to keep on increasing the selected button index variable by one. And that is going to make sure that we are always picking the correct value from the current button pattern list. So for that, we're going to create an else statement underneath here. So we're going to say else, and then we're going to say selected button index plus equals one. And now we're also just going to make sure that we are restarting the interaction to make sure that the changes that we have made to these variables are going to take place inside of the game. So we're going to create a new line and then we're going to go inwards once in the indentations and then say rampy dot restart interaction. Like so. Now this if statement and its containing code is going to work just fine as long as the user has picked the correct button. But if they pick the wrong button instead, then we want to do something different. And in such a case, we are instead going to call a screen that we haven't yet created that we're going to call game over and we'll tell the user that they picked the wrong button and therefore lost and have to try again. So for that, we're going to create a new line underneath this last line right here and then go inwards once in the annotations. And then we're going to create an else statement. So we're going to say else. And to show the screen that we haven't yet created, we're going to use the show screen function that is available in Rampy. So for that, we're going to say Rampy dot show screen. And then the name for the screen is going to be game over, like so. And then after that, we want to make sure that we are hiding the Simon Says screen. So for that, we're going to use the hide screen function. So we're going to say vampire.hide screen. And then Simon says, like so. Now the last thing we're going to add to this function is going to be another if statement that is going to check if the user has gotten all of the correct buttons right in the current pattern. And if they have, then we're just going to return the user back to the Simon Says menu. But you can of course create another screen if you like and have the user go to that one instead. So for that, we're going to create a new line underneath this last else statement, and then go inwards once in the annotations. And then we're going to say, if correct picks is equal to, and we're going to compare it to the length of the current button pattern list. So we're going to say, len, and then current button pattern, like so. And then instead of him, we're going to use the show screen function again to show the Simon Says menu. So we're going to say show screen, and then Simon Says menu. And to make this look a little bit nicer, we can use a transition that is going to fade the screens. So for that, we're going to create a new line and then say transition. So we're using the transition function that is available in Rampy, and this is going to be a fade. So we're going to write fade and then two round brackets like so. And then instead of here, we're going to say one, zero and one, which means that it's going to fade out for one second, then hold for zero seconds and then fade in for one second. And the last thing we're going to do is then to hide the Simon Says screen. So we're going to say hide screen. And then Simon says, like so. Now I just realized that I did a mistake up here in the if statement where we're checking if the selected button index variable is equal to user picks. The selected button index variable should instead actually be the current button index variable. So we're going to remove this selected and say current instead. So now this is going to work correctly. So now we can actually go ahead and save our changes and then launch the game to see what this looks like. So now that we have the game open and running, we're going to go ahead and test it on the easy difficulty. So we're going to press on the play button. And here we can see that the blue button lit up as the first button in the pattern. So let's go ahead and click on it and see what happens. So there we could see that the blue button lit up just after we pressed on it. And then it lit up again after that, together with the new button, which was yellow. So that means that we got the blue button correct. So now we're just going to repeat the blue button again together with the yellow one.
And that also seemed to be correct because after we pressed on the blue button and the yellow button, it then repeated those buttons together with the new button, which was green. So let's go ahead and continue to repeat that pattern. And that was also correct because now we had the same buttons light up again together with the fourth button, which is the last one, and that is the red one. So let's go ahead and repeat the pattern. And as we can see, we got all of the buttons correct in the entire pattern, which then resulted in that we got back to the Simon Says menu. And those were all the intended behaviors that we were expecting to see, so we know that that is working correctly. The only thing we haven't tested yet is what happens if we get a button wrong in the pattern. But for that, we're going to need to create the game over screen first, which we are going to do in the next video. So thank you so much for watching and I hope that you enjoyed this video and the series so far. And if you have, please consider to press the like button and leave a comment down below to let me know. And as always, I hope to see you in the next video.